Hello everyone. Hope you all are well. You may have seen a previous video on the topic of mass psychogenic illness and what it was, what the nature of it was, you know. And uh, if you haven't seen that, you might want to go check it out. It's uh, brief, but to the point, you know, kind of just discusses what what is this, you know, a little bit of psychology reading. And it turns out there are some methods with how to treat it, you know. Remedy. Psychogenic illness. Because like any other kind of discomfort, you know, emotional, mental discomfort, there's things that can be done to create ease, you know, from disease. So the Leroy Teen Mystery here written an article from Time Magazine, How to Treat Mass Psychogenic Illness. A psychologist talks about how contagious psycho psychological disorders may be fanned by fear, anxiety, and the media. So they're contagious. They're going between people's heads psychologically. And it, it, maybe it's fanned by fear, anxiety, and media. Could it be? Maybe. Could it happen? At the same time, the individuals who are exhibiting symptoms need to be protected in order to help cure their feeling of disease. The best advice in terms of managing this would be that the impacted individuals should be kept apart from one another. I mean, you might not want them to feed off of each other's, uh, you know, ticks or whatever. To reduce the contagion aspect, yeah, you know, they might start, you know, maybe one of them coughs, the other one thinks that, oh no, they might have got the same disease, you know. They should be shielded from the media. Kind of obvious if the media, you know, is uh, fanning the flames of, what was that, fear, anxiety, <laughs> right? You know, there's an investigation going on. That, that, might, that might create some dis-ease for people that might think that they have, you know, some kind of uh, illness that might be psychogenic. So that they can let their sense of alarm and threat start calming down, right? So they have a sense of alarm and threat. We gotta let that calm down for these people, you know. And uh, you know, possibly not having them uh, <clears throat> get fed so much media fear and anxiety and uh, or feed off of each other's fears, you know. Could, could be helpful. That's one way to do it. Maybe give them something else to do. What are other concerns that arise when treating psychogenic illness? No, it varies by situation. The important thing is to reduce the sense of threat, reduce the opportunity for contagion and continued inflammation, and cr create conditions in which the illness is fully validated, while at the same time supporting the ability to recover. So, if they're sick, you know, like if you know somebody that's not feeling well because they're all scared and anxious, you can tell, you're like, man, this person is scared and anxious. And they have a sense of threat, right? You can validate, validate them, you know? Oh, you feel sick? What do you need? Chicken soup? You want a little help? You know what I mean? Whatever, right? Well, at the same time, you're supporting their ability to recover. Hey, I heard chicken soup and herbal tea is really helpful for making your body stronger and feel good, you know, right? Hugs even, maybe, you know? Affected people need to believe that they don't lose face by recovering. No need to make fun of them, man, you know? They might have had a little thing going on, right? They get over it. No need to tease them or anything, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a psychogenic illness. It can happen, you know what I mean? It's like, if somebody, somebody starts feeling better, they come around, you know, no need to... Uh, mock them or anything, right? Make it silly. It's just one of those things that happens, you know. Given tools that allow them to reconceptualize what happened and to let the physio physiology calm down. So they might be really having, I mean, we discussed this in the previous video, they could really be feeling ill. You get a headache, sore throat, you can get hives, you can get itchy eyes, you know, you can have all kinds of even rather, it can be a multiple. You have a lot of discomforting effects from just this um, 
psychological pressure, essentially, psychogenic illness. And But you can allow that to subside. They can reconceptualize what happened, like, oh, maybe it wasn't that bad, you know? Maybe I just got a little carried away because maybe the media was fanning the flames of fear and anxiety. I don't know. Who knows what's going on, right? There's nothing worse than feeling like you're ill, feeling ill because of some agent. Yet people are saying, oh, you're stressed and patting your head in, in a condescending manner, right? So you don't need to condescend to them, right? They're obviously feeling ill and they think that maybe there's some agent because, you know, they heard and the uh, you're telling them to stress. Yeah, maybe. I mean, de-stressing is a good thing for your immune system, for sure. But maybe they need some herbal tea. You know, I don't know. You could offer them something. Help help somebody out if you can. If they're if they're interested, something to take the stress off. A little distraction. Maybe not the echo chamber of disease. You know, and no need to be condescending. Be friendly. Everybody should be loving and friendly. It's near a cure all. You know. That will understandably provoke the, I have to prove that I'm ill. So if you talk to him condescending, they're, they're going to have to try to prove it, right? And uh, you know what? If you want to come straight up, you know, you could ask them, uh, you know, if they have any. I, I don't know why they would need to prove that they're ill, you know. If they're feeling sick, get them some chicken soup, you know. Take, you can take care of people. That's the last thing you want patients to have to put more energy into validating the thing. So if you just validate it for them, get them some chicken soup, whatever, you know, pat them on, give, give them a real hug, whatever they need. No need to condescend. They, they'll be able to, like we said before, reconceptualize what happened. Support the ability to recover. It's really validated, you know. They'll be all right. What is the impact of media attention? Well... When you think about the process, what we believe underlies the onset of psychogenic illness, for instance, mass psychogenic illness, it's a sense of threat, right? So these people think, oh no, I could get something, you know? The most common triggers for psychogenic illness is the perceived detection of a noxious odor. Wow. That seems to be a trigger for this, because this actually happens in places at various times, so real thing that can happen in massive groups of people. An odor is perceived and people think, what is it? Is it dangerous? They may start getting anxious. Those anxiety symptoms may cause nausea and faintness due to hyperventilation. So, I mean, like, you really, you make yourself, it'll get worked up. It could really happen. That's why it's probably helping bring things down. I mean, you, you know, it's one of the reasons why you don't need to poke fun at people. No need to be condescending because you're trying to bring things down, you know, to a calm peaceful level you know so that you can help maybe they're maybe they're sick maybe they need to lay up and get some get some chicken noodle soup and stuff you know i mean there's a lot of things you do for somebody if they're feeling feeling poor we're always attributing what we're feeling feeling to something so everybody's you feel something you think why do i feel that way i gotta figure this out if we feel sick and think oh i wonder if this food was bad right oh i wonder if somebody gave me something this is not an atypical process. It's just what people try to figure out explanations, obviously. It's about the attribution that gets made. So, right? Are they overworked? Are they stressed about things in their life and they're, and they're making themselves ill and they need help, you know? Or are they attributing it to something else because they don't know what to attribute it to because they're not sure how to pin it down? You know, what's actually going on here? What is, what's going to help somebody feel better, right? So people notice something unusual. They label the event as threatening. So maybe they notice something weird on the, the television or maybe there's stuff uh, out in the world that people things are wearing and saying, you know. Uh, <sighs> they notice these things. Oh no, is there a threat, right? The media reports it widely. That increases anxiety, which increases physical symptoms. So it could be like a, uh, a runaway train a little bit, right? For some of these folks. And then these symptoms are attributed to the threat, the threat that they perceived when, you know, it started popping up in the world around them a little bit like uh, signs, places, and things people were saying, you know. It becomes a rapidly spiraling mind-body process, just runaway freight train. That's why it could be exhausting, sounds like. 
What do we know about the link between media coverage and mass psychogenic illness? Well, the jury's out. There's an awful lot of epidemiologic, <laughs> epidemiological evidence or work that suggests that a great degree of media exposure is associated with increased anxiety and psychogenic illness. This is not a criticism of the media. They're doing their job. It's just that more media signals a more serious threat, a key factor in the onset of perpetuation of psychogenic illness. So they don't they they say it's not criticism of the media um okay but uh maybe it's not but definitely apparently more media signals just to increase the threat level idea so it's almost like maybe like chicken soup some tea maybe you get a cup of coffee go out for a walk you know <laughs> enjoy some gardening um foraging maybe take your shoes off and go step in the on the dirt somewhere the grass you know there's a lot a lot of things that could be done to uh you know, just take the mind off of things and get some rest, you know, and enjoy some stuff and have somebody help, uh, you know, another person if they're, uh, if they're feeling ill, you know, for sure. In scientific review papers on this topic, people observe that to the extent that there is very intense media coverage, as well as emergency medical response and continued response, those factors are associated with a prolonged episode of psychogenic illness reoccurrence and further contagion pretty straightforward why would both media and emergency service be potentially negative because both media attention as well as emergency medical response signal threat my god there really is something to be worried about people are being taken to the hospital people are being kept for observation the health department is here so 